So I was supposed to have been out with a friend this morning, but then he texted me and said, it doesn't look like there's any fog, so I'm going back to bed. You messed up there, Paul. So I've, I've taken a couple of little sort of snaps along the way which I haven't sort of talked about but I have found an image which is okay. I mean the trouble with this woodland is that um, I think it was in my first video I captured a couple of really nice images and I, I think for me they're probably some of the better compositions that this woodland has to offer. But it's definitely, I mean there'll, there'll be tons of other comp um, compositions but they were certainly the more obvious and had some really really nice features. But anyway, I've, I've come across this silver birch tree here, so I'll just spin round. And I love stuff like this where it just breaks the mould. It doesn't look like it belongs there. It's very different to everything that surrounds it. So they make really nice subjects. And what I quite like about this as well, there's kind of a little dead bit on the floor. It helps to add a bit of character. Um, it's really quite dark because it's so damp, so it's got an element of kind of mood and gloominess to it. But then sort of out in the distance is these two pine trees which have these curvy bases and it's not like a really strong focal point but it's just it's just a little bit of added interest and it just helps to kind of catch your attention so rather than just seeing the tree we do have a kind of route through the image and through the woodland and a little sort of minor point of interest down there so uh yeah the count we have lost a bit of fog um so we, they were kind of not kind of getting that simplicity that I like. It's not sort of softened the background as much as I like. But yeah, gonna go for that. F5.6, get all that foreground in focus. Help to emphasize the fog just by softening that little bit with a, a, a sort of shallower depth of field. Um, ISO 100, let the shutter speed do its thing. Not concerned about that whatsoever because it's so calm. There's just no movement. And uh, yeah, see how that turns out. I'm getting really quite wet just in this shirt but it's so humid and warm just too warm to put a jacket on and there's no wind and I'm surrounded by midge so I'm getting bitten to death as usual uh, so it's kind of bittersweet because there's still this glorious atmosphere and I've said it before and I'll say it again yes yes the end goal is to get a nice image but if you don't then these conditions in a woodland it's just a fantastic atmosphere to walk around so what I've been looking out for now is just moving to the edge of the woodland where the trees start to thin out because what you get when it's foggy is you kind of think well there's no light when it's foggy you know where's the sun but when you kind of get these openings then that kind of really soft light that comes from the fog it just brings out all the detail and colour and some of the trees can look really really nice so I found this one here so I'll just spin round and the detail and all those kind of light green colours and that bark almost sort of like reptilian bark it just makes a fantastic subject but this is where things get tricky because although it makes a fantastic subject it's very tempting just to kind of take a photo straight away and just sort of think that's the only thing that you need to pay attention to but as with any woodland shot that I take, I'm quite often looking to take the sky out so there's no distracting highlights. I think the mistake that some people make with woodland is sometimes take too much in and then but it's very very hard to find a woodland scene which where you can take a big vista where it doesn't include distracting elements so there's no kind of obvious way through. So um, yeah with this I, I really want to take a photo of it but I'm just trying to find a composition where I don't have distracting elements, I can take the sky out, there's a nice run th route through and then the whole composition just sort of works and is balanced and I'm kind of struggling with it a little bit. I mean there's no doubt that even if I take a wider view it's still going to make quite a nice shot because of the detail of this but I, I kind of want something kind of better just to really make the most of this. 
So um, yeah, I'm going to take a different focal lengths, try some a bit wider where there is a bit of sky, see if we can get away with that, going a bit closer, but then when you're going a bit closer then you start to bring in too much foreground and don't rush, take a shot. Um, I kind of always sort of say to people, don't be happy with the first image that you've taken, even if it looks good, just keep looking around, move around and see if you can improve upon it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to see if this can make this work because this tree does look really, really nice. So I've come out of the woodland now because unfortunately that, that fog has lifted. It's kind of lingering around above the treetops now, but I perhaps caught just enough in that last photo that I took, um, but it definitely wasn't as dense as when I first arrived. But hopefully there's still enough atmosphere in there. So I've decided to finish things off by coming out onto the open moors where you can see all the heather is still out, but it is dying off in this location. All the pinks are kind of going a little bit orange and rusty now. But we've got a couple of nice sort of lone pine trees here. Um, quite big, sort of certainly a lot bigger than the ones I was photographing in the last episode. Um, nice bit of character, we've got the one in the distance there, kind of faded out in the fog. It just kind of helps to add to the atmosphere, draws you into the image, gives a little bit of balance to the composition. Um, but yeah, there's just enough, there's probably too much fog when I first arrived to photograph these. Now there's probably just enough. Um, so, something quite important with this is if I just sort of took a single exposure, I am at risk of that tree coming out really dark. There's a good chance that you could probably take one exposure, lift the shadows afterwards, but just to be absolutely sure, I'm going to bracket the exposures and then I can see afterwards if I want to blend them or not. So it's really simple, it's just about the space, lots of negative space. There are some kind of silver birch saplings dotted, <coughs> just swallowed a fly. <coughs> silver birch saplings uh, dotted about. So it's just making sure I'm not kind of clipping them in the edges. If there's going to be the one, one in the shot, then make sure the whole thing is included. Otherwise it becomes a little bit of a, a distraction really. So yeah, probably F8, something like that. And away you go. In fact, if I take it now, Meg's probably in the shot because she's been rooting around over there for ages. So I've decided to take just one more shot. I've come to the other side of the tree that was furthest away in the previous image. Um, and then just looking back, and I, I really like that, they kind of get those two images where there's a connection between the two. Um, but with this one, we've got the woodland in the background where I've just spent some time this morning. So yeah, it's a sort of similar scenario, but what I'm doing is coming further away from the tree and then zooming in, because what I want to do is compress that background a little bit. Because if I get too close, and then fit this foreground tree in, then the woodland in the background actually kind of disappears off the left hand side of the frame. So I just sort of think it finishes the image off nicely if there's a sort of nice solid band of trees in the background. So yeah, come back, compress the background, makes that distant tree look a little bit bigger as well. Lots of negative space, job done.
it's so easy when your alarm clock goes off at five o'clock in the morning to just keep pressing that snooze button but I'm so glad that I made the effort to just jump out of bed and take my chances because there's been far more fog than I initially anticipated. Have I captured any keepers? I don't know, but it's just been great to be out and soaking up the atmosphere and enjoying these beautifully calm conditions. So I'm going home now to get my caffeine fix. Uh, Meg's over there somewhere having a little paddle in a pool. As previously mentioned, I do now run one-to-one -one workshops. There's a link there for some more information. I'll pop a link in the description as well. All the technical information about the images that I've taken today, I'll pop that in the description. Uh, but for now, hope you've enjoyed this episode and hope to see you for the next one.